Uh, I'm really excited for this uh, video tutorial uh, because Muse just came out with a, a new update and it has to do with self-hosted fonts. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with that, it's just another way of letting you add your own uh, web fonts to Adobe Muse. Uh, I remember when I first started with Adobe Muse, it didn't have this feature and I actually had to manually uh, insert uh, my web fonts and code and then put those web fonts in a folder uh, after Adobe Muse outputs the HTML, outputted the HTML. Uh, I don't know if that made any sense, but basically uh, this new feature is really great. It lets you add your own system fonts in a really nice way. Um, yeah, so basically I'll, I'll let you know what I did before. Like I'm gonna open Muse, um, click OK. So before, if I had a web font that wasn't included in the type kit that Adobe Muse offers, uh, I would have to go to object and, um, and I would have to go to page properties and in here in the HTML head, I would have to do something like, you know, like insert the, the, uh, the, the font, uh, in the head tag. And then that font would have to be, um, in the folder after Adobe Muse outputs the website. All right, so that's just some geeky stuff. Um, for those of you who know about that stuff, you'll know kind of what I'm talking about. But anyways, let me get back to the video. So yeah, I'm, I'm really excited because it's just a really cool feature. So um, what I'm gonna do now is show you what I did earlier um, and kind of give you a tutorial on how to do this. So one of my favorite places to get fonts or, you know, I don't use it too often, but I, I like checking it out because it has um, really, really awesome fonts. Um, it's called chank.com. And obviously he has paid fonts and, you know, uh, duly so because, I mean, this person makes just like incredible web fonts um, or fonts, I should say. Um, now, these aren't uh, off the bat uh, web fonts. And this is what I thought was really cool. And, um, you know, I'm happy to be sharing this information with you. So like, let's say this is the one I already did was this cosmic odyssey. Uh, he has a few, uh, free fonts, um, that you can download. So we're just going to pick a font. Um, I'm going to click on free fonts right over here. Uh, there's free fonts right down here and he has paid fonts and stuff. You know, uh, I would look through all these fonts are just really like, something else like real real artistic and and just great um for some reason my okay there we go thought it was loading a, a bit slower um okay so i'm gonna pick one of these fonts uh these are for free to download um let's see all right oh he has a license you must purchase to use them commercially Da, da, da. I'm just using this for demonstration purposes. So yeah, recreational uses. So I think this, this will be, yeah, this is fine. Um, so let's see, uh, what's a cool font here. Um, doo -doo -doo. let's pick, um, this one, tend rolling, <laughs> Ten, tender rolling, tenderloin. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So I'll just click on this and then I can click download. All right, so if I check my download folder, I see I have this tenderloin.otf. There's no way I can use that in Adobe Muse. Now I'll show you why. So this is the new feature in Adobe Muse. So like, uh, I could use this in Adobe Muse. Like uh, I have to install it as a system font. Um, so I'll go ahead and do that. I just double click the font I downloaded, click install font, and now it's in my computer. I have this font installed. So if I go in Adobe Muse, and I write uh, some text and then um, I just highlight this and then I go to um, you know system fonts I think I can search for it so tender tenderloin there it is and then there it is I have tenderloin um, it's an interesting name but uh, yeah there's tenderloin and here uh, at capital makes it uh, a little bit different now this isn't a web font um you can see it says t and then it has the image right there in there this is telling you that this is an image uh it's going to be placed as an image but it looks like text you can actually uh, and this will give it actually let me call this uh not tom text some some text um this will give it an alternative text of some text so let me show you what that looks like in the browser so if hit command shift e 
we see we have some text there if I inspect it um, I see that the alternate text has some text so at least Muse is saying hey this image has the, an alternative text uh, of some text so um, for the search engines and you know the web uh, yeah mostly the search engines they'll know that this image is uh, has an alternative some text and it'll say okay uh, this image has to do with something about some text um, so that's something that recently Muse did I think it was in the latest update I'm not sure when they did it but I just noticed this when I was doing another tutorial which is really cool um, because prior um, you know if 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 a text is placed as Im an image you don't really know what the image is about and you can't add an alternative text um, to this text here but it, Muse does it automatically all right, but there's a there's a better way to, to do it, and that's by converting this into a web font, and that will actually put the text within the code. And search engines love that because it lets it lets the search engines know what the page is about. Um, and I really recommend using web fonts. That's why Adobe offers so many different web fonts because you know it's really good to use web fonts and to have the flexibility of using awesome fonts as web fonts is really great. Um, okay, so I'm going to convert this to a web font um, and I'm going to show you now the new feature uh, that uh, Adobe Muse just came out with in the latest update. So if I click on, on this font and um, yeah, let me just digress a little bit because that's a lot of information, but now I'm really going to show you the uh, the new feature in, in Adobe Muse uh, in the latest update. So if I click on this, this font. Um, you can see it's it's, uh, it's an image. It's, it's placed as an image. Uh, it's not a web font. Uh, but if I go to um, if I just highlight this text, if I go over here to the font, um, and I go to web fonts, and I click on Add Web Fonts, you can now see we have Adobe Edge web fonts, and I can pick any of these and install them. Or we have self-hosted web fonts. As you can see, I've already installed this Cosmic Odyssey, which I showed you earlier on a uh, Chang fonts. Um, but if I go to manage, um, or let me see, add fonts, yep, right here, this little window pops up. Um, and you'll have to drag these three different files into this window, a .woff, a .eot, and a .svg. Okay, now if we looked at the file we downloaded from Chang Fonts, um, it's a .otf. So, you know, that's not any of these files, even if I try to drag it in here says no web font files were found. All right, so this is where I got really excited. Um, I looked around and I found this website. Um, I'll, I bookmarked it. It's called uh, Font Squirrel. Um, I think it's pretty popular, I've seen it before. And yeah, you just go to Font Squirrel uh, dash tools uh, dash web font generator. I'll put it in the, um, in, in the link below this video. Uh, so, so I clicked on uh, optimal um, it says recommended settings for performance and speed you can pick expert or basic and all I'm gonna do here is click add fonts and then I'm gonna go to my um, where I placed uh, this font uh, which is let's see yep desktop um, let's see Adobe Muse videos no it's in uh, let me just view the list here and uh, I think it's in here. No, nope, it's in VWD videos. Here we go. All right, and then Chang fonts here. Cosmic Odyssey. Nope, that's not where it is. Um, sorry. So add fonts. It's in downloads. Definitely. Um, if I can find it, um, what was it called? So it was called yeah Tenderloin. Um, so for some reason it's not showing it to me there. But if I type it in here, Tenderloin. Uh, let's search in downloads. Okay. Um, uh, very interesting. All right, I'm just going to do a quick thing here. Um, let me see. Yeah, see, I can click on cosmicodyssey.otf. Um, so let me just try to drag and drop this in here. Did that work? No. All right. Sorry about this. I might cut this out of the video because I just did it and it worked uh, beautifully. So um, let me try this one more time. Let me let me place this 
uh, file within another folder. See if that uh, helps me out. Chank fonts, um, and I'm going to put this not in chank font right there. Okay, and tenderloin is now in there. Add fonts, uh, chank fonts. Oh, there it is. Um, not sure why I couldn't select it from the downloads. Maybe I was missing something, but I have it now here, and I can select files. So if I go to add fonts, uh, tenderloin is right here. If I double click, click open. All right, you can see it put tenderloin regular into this web font generator. And then you have to click on this agreement here. It says, yes, the fonts I'm uploading are legally eligible for web embedding. Um, so, and it says honor any end user license agreement. So we just have to look here if, you know, there's anything with that. Um, I think it's okay. Again, I'm just using this as demonstration purposes. Um, but definitely look through the website and, and just, you know, with any fonts you use, make sure you're not kind of um, crossing any end, end user license agreement type stuff. Um, so that's it. Uh, again, I just went to Font Squirrel Tools, Web Font Generator, Add Fonts, and I added, I added that uh, Chank font here. All right, so now all I have to do is click on Download Your Kit. Okay, and it's gonna download it to my download folder. And there it goes. So if I go to my download folder, I have this folder here called Web Font Kit and has a bunch of numbers next to it. So I'm just gonna put this folder in my other folder, in my Chank Font folder, and it's right here. Um, you don't have to do that, I just did that for organization purposes. Uh, and now if we look in this folder, we have, let's go back to Adobe Muse, we, needed, we need a .woff, a, a dot EOT and a dot SVG. So over here we have a dot EOT, dot SVG, and a dot WOFF. And all I have to do to make this into a web font to be able to use in Muse is click here on the w, uh, dot WOFF. Uh, I'm hitting command on my Mac. I think it would, it would be maybe shift on your uh, Windows. So I'm clicking dot WOFF. Um, now I'm clicking on .svg and .eot. Those three files here, I have them right here. I'm just going to click and drag it into this window and it says three web font files were found. By clicking continue, I affirm I have prop properly licensed the above fonts for website use. All right, click OK, click continue, and there it is, Tenderloin Regular. Um, so I can I can even add a license information like let's say Chang Fonts wanted me to add some license information if I was using it um, I would just go here and get the license like there's a license right here so um, for personal use uh, so I could even copy all this information from Chang Fonts just to really honor uh, you know that he made this and all that good stuff so now it has a license and that's it. Um, and you know you can do that for any other web fonts you have and click OK and click OK and one font family was added to the web fonts menu so I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna go ahead and delete this because again uh, using uh, text as images isn't the best practice you want the browser to know what your text is saying um, so I'm gonna type in some text in tenderloin <laughs> font from Chank Fonts. I think they even have an exclamation point. All right. So I'm just going to highlight this font. Now, if I go to my fonts, um, click here. Uh, if I go to web fonts, I now have tenderloin as an option. And you can now see there's no T with an image. This is actually a web font, which is amazing to me. That means, I mean, you know, I can go and find really cool web uh, fonts convert them to web fonts and use them in Adobe Muse. Um, you know, again, check out the licenses and all that stuff, but I just think this is an amazing idea and it's just really awesome. Uh, for Tenderloin, it doesn't seem like I have to use uppercase letters because that just makes it look weird. Um, it makes the capitals look weird, so I'm just gonna change these. Some text in Tenderloin uh, font from Chank Fonts. And uh, the exclamation looks a little bit weird, so I'm just gonna take it out. <laughs> All right, so there we go. I have that text. I can even, you know, center it. And let me just show you how cool this is. So if I preview this in the browser, I hit Command Shift E. 
there's my text in the browser centered if I right click and inspect the element inspect this text some text in tenderloin font from chang fonts I don't know if you're if you're seeing this but it, you know if you deal with code and you know you know like what this looks like and what this is this text is actually in the browser as text so you know Google Bing any search engine is gonna look at this website and is gonna see that this is text so if your website is called I don't know tenderloin or something you know not that it would be but I don't know who knows but let's say your website was called the title of your page was called you know tenderloin um, you had images that had tenderloin in it <laughs> tenderloin is such a funny word and and now Google sees okay the word tenderloin is in the is in the body of of the code within this page and um, I can you know I can clearly see that you know the word tenderloin is in there that makes for a cohesive uh, website that's great for search engine optimization and just great for the websites uh, for the search engines to find your page and, and know that it's consistent, it's cohesive, and you're actually talking about a specific topic within that page. Um, you know, it just keeps that consistency. If this was uh, text as an image, you know, uh, Google might be okay with that if it had the alternative text, but again, this is the best practice, uh, having the text directly in the code so that search engines know what your page is about. It's just, you know, really great practice, and, you know, it's kind of like the, the preferred and some of the best practices for, for web design. Okay, uh, so that's it for this video. Uh, I'm really excited to be sharing this with you. Um, I just did this I, again, like right before this video and I said, okay, I have to share this with everybody. It's such a cool feature. It's, it's a new upgrade in Muse and uh, really have fun with this. Again, look at the licenses, make sure you're not crossing any any uh, license stuff and all that, you know, you know, license and usual license agreements, blah, blah, blah. But, but yeah, um, if, if everything is good, uh, definitely this is a really cool way to add web fonts to Adobe Muse. All right, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please subscribe. Uh, I'm actually thinking of creating a website where I, um, you know, offer some, even some icons and some, some other graphic design stuff that you can use in your Adobe Muse websites. I know there's somebody else doing it, but, uh, you know, we have a great graphic designer on our team who who creates icons and just amazing stuff. So along with some of this information I'm sharing with you, I think I'm going to create a site just for my video tutorials to be able to in, and share some some graphic and some icons with you and some, you know, more tutorials uh, so you can really get the most out of Adobe Muse and have fun uh, designing websites. Uh, so thanks for watching. Uh, if you like this video, uh, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.